and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It's the first Thursday of the month, which means we are in the kitchen with Across the Fence. I'm joined by our guest chefs, Carolyn Peake from Williamstown and, of course, uh, from South Hero, both Deb Plumley and Lynn Jarvis. They've each prepared some delicious recipes for all of us using locally grown produce, the theme of today's show. But before we take a look at the recipes, let's take a look at the winners of the boat ride on Lake Champlain's Paradise Bay. Here are Alan and Debbie Dickerson of Grand Isle, and they're getting ready to board the boat with Lynn. Our congratulations to Alan and Debbie. Now, it wasn't long until they found a quiet place to enjoy lunch, which of course included Lynn's deviled eggs, my favorite. <laughs> At the end of today's program, you can learn how you can enter our free drawing for this month's boat ride. And Lynn, looks like you had a beautiful day on the lake. We did. Uh, we lucked out to find a nice afternoon between all the rain showers mm -hmm. we've been having. I enjoyed meeting uh, Debbie and Al, and they were a lot of fun. And we thought about you when we were eating those deviled eggs, so I brought two for oh. you for lunch today. <laughs> Fantastic. Just what I need. Thanks so much. You're I know I have welcome. lots of recipes to get to, so Deb, why don't you start us off? Okay, absolutely. Well, as you can see by this beautiful basket of Vistabellas, the apple season has begun, much to my grandson Cole's delight. So let's start with some wonderful apple muffins. These are chock full of chopped apples. The batter is flavored with brown sugar and cinnamon, and they bake up just wonderful, as you can see. And as an added touch, though, I like to sprinkle a little bit of brown sugar on the batter before you bake it. And it just gives it a nice, crumbly, crunchy topping. And this recipe makes about 18, so I'm sure they would freeze well if you didn't use them all up at one time. Now, to complement the muffins, let me just move this here, we have this rosy potato leek soup. It features chopped leeks, potatoes, and tomatoes that you cook down in a vegetable broth that's flavored with some dried dill. Once everything has cooked, I use my immersion blender to puree it, and before serving, you add some half and half and some salt and pepper to taste. And I thought it looked really pretty with a dollop of sour cream and some fresh dill on the top. So enjoy that, if you will. Now this time of year, my garden has exploded, and I'm always looking for ways to use up some cucumbers. And short of chopping them up and putting them on my oatmeal in the morning, I thought perhaps these 48-hour refrigerator pickles would be a good way to use some cukes. Start with a clean quart canning jar, add sliced cucumbers, some garlic cloves, and fresh dill, and you cover with a brine just made of vinegar, water, and salt. Put it in the fridge, and two days later, you're going to have some great fresh cucumber pickles. Let me just tilt them a little here so you can see how pretty they are. And these will keep for several weeks in the fridge. They will get a little bit softer, though, as they sit in the refrigerator. Now, let's talk about this summer garden pizza. You start with kale pesto. And I have to say, before I made this, I was not a big fan of kale. But chopped kale is put in a blender with walnuts, Parmesan cheese, olive oil, salt, and pepper. And it makes about one and a half cups. It freezes very well, so you'll have plenty later to enjoy in the season. I took an artisan pizza crust, spread it with the kale pesto, and then I added sliced tomatoes. I have yellow and red for some pretty color. I had a little extra purple peppers, so I added that for a dash. Sprinkle it with shredded cheese, some oregano. 12 minutes later, you've got a great garden pizza, just ready to enjoy. Virginia Lange of Sheldon sent in this recipe for blueberry cake cups for two. It's a fabulous recipe. It's very simple. You bake them in 10 to a 12 ounce baking cups. And you want to use something that size because the batter does puff up during baking. But when it settles, you've got this beautiful dessert that's just studded with all sorts of fresh blueberries. And I think it looks great with some whipped cream and some blueberries on the top. So I want to thank you, Virginia, for sending this in. I think this recipe is going to be a keeper, and I'm so glad you decided to share it with us. Now, I think Carolyn has been quite busy in the kitchen, and it looks like she has a lot of great things to share. Oh, yeah. But... Cucumbers on your oatmeal? I thought maybe it would be a way to use them, but I think these pickles are going to be a better choice. I think I'd have to be awfully desperate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have a, quite a bunch of recipes for us today. And I'm going to start with, aha, my slow cooker, 
You know I can't get by without that. And I have a corn chowder in here. The, the recipe for it came from this little cookbook called How to Cook Vegetables, and it's put out by the double, excuse me, W. Atley Burpee Company. Yes, that is the seed company. It's rather old. This one is, was published in uh, 1912, so 102 years ago, and it was the 25th edition. So this has been out for quite a while, and I believe it had belonged to my grandmother because I found it in my aunt's things after she died. So uh, it is a corn chowder recipe. I put both the recipe from the book and I kind of tweaked it for more modern uh, tastes and put that recipe in too. So it's very simple. You just cut up potatoes, put them in the bottom of your, your cooker or a regular saucepan, and you cook some onions and some either ham or bacon, and then you put that you layer things in and put the cream corn on top, and you have a really nice soup for, well, the days are gonna get colder, believe me. So you may not want it right now, but you will. I also have a carrot salad. And this is just shredded carrots, cut up apples. There's some nuts in there. And I'm gonna serve that on this plate Whoops, that I'm going to talk about what's there in a few minutes. I didn't bring a big enough spoon, did I? Oh, well. And the uh, topping for it is vegetable oil, pineapple juice, vinegar, ginger, and then you have the nuts afterwards. Also on my plate with the salad, I have a tomato quiche. And this is just your basic quiche. It's cut up tomatoes. Uh, some onions, basil, white pepper, Swiss cheese. The Swiss cheese goes on the bottom. You put the rest of the ingredients on top. You put eggs, three eggs and a cup of half and half and just bake it the way you would any quiche. My viewer recipe, I'm gonna see if I can finagle things around a bit here comes from Alice Ronzo of Bradford, Vermont, and she sent a chocolate zucchini cake recipe. And this makes up very quickly. She said you can cook it in a nine by 13 pan, you can cook it in uh, two loaf pans or a tube pan, and I made it in the loaf pan because that way I could make two of them. So you can fix that up when you've got zucchini crawling in the front door, you can beat them back with that. Now also, one last dessert is a Yankee blueberry cake. And it has oodles and oodles of blueberries in it. It is, has a cream cheese frosting on it. And let's just cut a piece off here and then I'll... I was out at 11 o'clock last night picking some blueberries to decorate it with. So. And it is packed with blueberries. So you've got plenty of yummy fruit in it. You can, there we go. You can just enjoy that with a cup of coffee or tea or for dessert or maybe some lemonade. And Lynn's gonna come in and. If I was up at 11 o'clock last night, you wouldn't see me now. Oh, well. <laughs> I, yeah, but good for you. Good I'm for a you. night owl. I'm not awake yet. This is an optical illusion. Okay, well, thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> and we recently received word that Ted Flanagan passed away at the age of 94. And you longtime viewers of Across the Fence may remember him as our extension garden specialist during the 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s and we all enjoyed working with him here on Across the Fence. And speaking of gardening, this is a great time of year to be in the kitchen because we have so much locally grown produce available. And I got most of mine from Deb's parents, Ron and Celia, up at Hackett's Orchard in South Hero. And I'm going to begin with my homemade tomato soup. And here you see it. Uh, it's very easy to make and there's nothing special about the recipe. The ingredients just seem to come together to create a classic and delicious soup. And all you do is boil and simmer three cups of tomatoes, milk, 
butter, baking soda, and spices and serve immediately. And this is almost as easy as opening up a can and it tastes just as good or a lot better. Now, this is my main dish right here. It's my pork chop casserole. It's made with locally grown potatoes, apples, and onions. And as you can see, it's made in layers. And on the bottom, there's the potatoes. Over that, there's the chops. Then you put on your apples and your onions. And the liquid can either be a chicken broth or a beef broth. And I chose chicken broth. And it comes out to be a very, very delicious casserole. And as Carolyn said, with the cooler weather coming, I'm sure you'll want to give this recipe a try. Uh, my next recipe is a viewer recipe. It comes from Donna Waldron down in Burlington, and we thank Donna for that. And it's right here. It's her savory squash casserole. And you can use yellow or zucchini squash, whichever you prefer. And like my tomato soup, the recipes just seem to come together to create a delicious flavor. Easy to make with the zucchini, as you can see. In here, there's also onions, eggs, grated cheddar, and maybe the secret ingredient is a couple of slices of buttered bread. Uh, bake at 375 for about 25 minutes and you're all ready to go. And people who say they don't like zucchini, might be surprised by this. Well, I really enjoy making desserts this time of year because we have so much locally grown produce available. And this recipe here, uh, I found in this magazine, it was uh, printed back in 2008, the Caledonia Record Recipe Contest publication. And in it was a recipe from Lori Ann Ackerman of Swansea, Massachusetts for her blueberry pudding cake. Now you viewers like pudding cakes because they're so easy to make. And the proof of that is there's less than 60 words in the instructions on how to make this recipe. Now, let me show it to you. Um, of course, in here, all you basically do is put blueberries in the bottom of the dish, put some, uh, dough over that and bake it about 375 for 25 minutes and you're all set to go maybe with a little ice cream or whipped cream and you're all set. It's a wonderful easy recipe with fresh blueberries and just take a look at that. Really good. And now we're going to move on to um, another recipe, a couple of recipes that I found in this um, little piece of paper. It's from the pocket cookbook and I bet it goes back 40 or 50 years. You viewers know I have a lot of recipes. You send them in to me. I have ones from my mother and grandmother. So I had a lot to choose from. And on this little piece of paper were two that fit the theme for our show today. And the first one is right here. It's this fresh plum crumb pudding. And if you take a look at it, you can see how it's made. It's made with, uh, I guess I've got my wrong recipe here. Where's my plum pudding. It's right here. <laughs> this is the fresh plum pudding. As you can see, it's made in little custard cups and it's made by alternating layers of plums with graham cracker crumbs, with melted butter, cinnamon, nutmeg, and to top it off, you want to put on a nice scoop of ice cream. And this is really good. You want to serve it warm when the plums are nice and tender and it hasn't become uh, hardened from time to uh, set. So there's that. And my last recipe is the one I was going to show you. It's this, uh, my favorite, the Cherry Betty. And I'm wondering if any of you have heard a recipe like this before. It's made in layers. Uh, cherries are alternated with graham cracker crumbs, corn flakes mixed with brown sugar, cinnamon and nutmeg. Dot the top with butter. Bake at 375 for about 20 minutes. Put some ice cream on and you have a delicious recipe and wasn't that a mess? <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic though. You really outdid yourself with all these recipes. I just wanted to return your container. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed <laughs> the eggs them. The are gone. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, 
We should also say that now we've got a couple of different ways. If you're interested in today's recipes, you can get them. The information and the information to enter our free drawing for the boat ride and lunch on Paradise Bay in South Hero. You can get the recipes online from the Across the Fence website. Go to uvm.edu slash extension. Click on the link to Across the Fence and you'll find the recipes on the left-hand side of the web page. To get the recipes by mail, send $2 and a stamp self-addressed business size envelope to locally grown Box 188 South Hero, Vermont 05486. And remember, if you're ordering the recipes to include $2 and a stamped self-addressed business size envelope, your order will automatically enter you in the free drawing for the boat ride. The address again is Box 188 South Hero 05486. If you're not ordering the recipes, just send along your name, address, and phone number to the South Hero address and that will enter you in the drawing. Good luck. Once again, our thanks to Deb and Carolyn and Lynn for all the wonderful recipes. We hope that you're able to visit and enjoy all the fair and field days that are happening around our viewing area and that you'll be able to join us on September 4th when our In the Kitchen theme will be perennial favorite apple recipes. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.